We spent Monday heaping a load of praise on the now five-year-old GH4. Well, now it's time to balance that out a little bit and mention why maybe, you know, you shouldn't buy something that's the, almost the same age as my son. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. First up, this is not in any way meant to be a negative video. Straight up, I really like the GH4 and I think it's quite the capable camera, especially at its current $700 price point. But it's not perfect and I find that my normal videos skew positive and I'm always trying to find a reason why you should buy a certain camera or piece of gear and now it's time to start balancing that out. So from now on, following a regular video, we'll do a point counterpoint of why you shouldn't buy it. Quick disclaimer, I'm not a photographer nor am I a professional videographer, so we'll be countering the points made in Monday's video linked here and consider the online content creators requirements that aren't being met here weird weird things so go watch the Monday video where I say how awesome the GH4 is and then come back here so you have a frame of reference for what we're gonna get into today I just waved my hand for no reason and lastly one more real quick note since this is a new video series here's a quick rundown of how it's gonna go I'm going to provide one of the reasons you shouldn't get the GH4, then I'm gonna provide options out there that already exist that could fix this problem, then we'll do the counterpoint on if this is or is not a fixable problem as a follow-up. Without any further ado, let's get into the four reasons why you shouldn't get the Panasonic GH4 in 2019. First up, let's talk about that shallow depth of field that everybody wants, right? I mean, we all want it and need it, right? Right? I think, well, I think we all do to certain amounts. Now, point number one, wide angle depth of field. If you are someone that wants a very wide angle lenses capable of razor thin depth of field, you're probably gonna have to look somewhere else. There are 0.95 lenses out there, but those are all manual focus. That means you can't even use my favorite focusing tip with this touchscreen or the Panasonic app to get it to work right. And those 0.95 lens are primarily standard or zoom style lenses. So not only will you need to be further away from your camera than you, know, you might want, you are stuck with a focus ring on the lens, making this an even worse problem. Like you'll have to actually manually focus the lens. And if you plan on spending any of your time in front of the camera, this will add a whole, whole lot of extra fiddle into your workflow that you might not, I mean, if that's might not be something you want. If you do want a wide angle shallow depth of field, I would recommend checking out at the very minimum an APS-C size centered camera like the Canon M50 or the Fuji X-T3. Both have wide angle lenses with very fast F ratings and you can see videos about both in the description below. Counterpoint. There are ways to work around it such as marking off your focus and distance on the lens itself without resorting to in-camera tools. But this is absolutely a problem that other larger cameras don't have. <laughs> the next issue continues to be around the sensor size, but in a different way. Point number two, low light. Another issue that might be a deal breaker for you with the sensor of the camera is it's a micro four thirds. Generally, you know, the GH5S is an anomaly. Generally, they don't perform at their best in low light. This is from a combination of reasons, but the two main for this come, once again, the sensor is physically much smaller than a full frame sensor, meaning that to get similar ISO performance, you'll need to be at a much higher ISO rating, and the higher you push your ISO, the more noise will be introduced to the image. This has gotten way better as time goes on, but full frame cameras these days, much like the Sony a7 III and other Sony cameras, have crazy low light abilities and can shoot at ISO levels that the GH4 could never ever even come close to. Counterpoint, keeping your videos well lit and sticking to the 400-ish ISO range will keep you golden and not need to worry about the higher ISO noise. So instead of spending more than twice as much on a full frame camera, you could spend a little more on lighting and get fantastic results. The biggest, biggest issue for me is point number three, and that has to do with the autofocus. Point number three, autofocus. This is Panasonic's biggest weakness, just as a company as a whole, not necessarily about the GH4. The autofocus performance on all of their cameras isn't great, but on the older versions, it's even worse. The main problem for this is when you consider a camera with good autofocus anymore, it's rocking some kind of on-sensor phase detection autofocus, Canon and Sony, where there are little nodes built into the sensor itself, judging where the camera focus should be. The main benefit out of this for video shooters is you won't get the weird pulsing in the background of your videos with phase detection, because that's something that you'll get out of Panasonic, which uses a contrast-based autofocus, which while notorious today, was introduced with the GH4 called depth from defocus. 
Long story short, I've complained about this a lot, but it has to do with continuously checking back and forth a little bit to make sure the subject stays in focus. And while it's not super noticeable on the subject itself, except when it misses focus, it makes the background pretty darn distracting. If you want good autofocus, you really need to get either a full phase detection system or some kind of hybrid system like those found in the Sony A5100 line of cameras or the new A6400 coming out here pretty soon, or again, even the Canon M50, which has Canon's class leading dual pixel autofocus. Counterpoint. This counterpoint actually means the most to me out of this entire video because this is something I've personally had to overcome to really start to love my GH5 that we're recording on right now. Which, while it's a newer camera, it has the same autofocus system built into it as the GH4. There are a couple main ways to work around the Panasonic autofocus system. First up, and it's the easiest way, is that if you can put the GH5 into manual focus, you can actually still single point autofocus from the articulating screen itself. It's really quick and when you enable focus peaking, it's a very reliable way to focus and confirm that what you want is in focus. You just whoop, whoop, bop, done. It's so easy. But if you are recording yourself and you are too tight of a focal length and thereby not able to physically touch the camera, like right now, you can install the Panasonic app onto your cell phone or tablet and control the camera wherever you are. Basically, this turns your phone into a second screen that is touch enabled. So useful, it's basically the best camera app ever. <laughs> and the fourth point isn't exactly fair as it wasn't something that cameras had back in 2014, but is becoming a very useful tool today. Point number four, stabilization. Video cameras today are in large part sold on their ability to stabilize footage without needing an external gimbal. Like bringing this thing or bringing, the, bringing these things around is great, but they're really big and heavy. Again, props to my GH5 that has incredible stabilization that's made even better with Panasonic's dual IS technology. The GH4 has no stabilization. It doesn't even have electronic image stabilization, which is heartbreaking. I mean, there's not really much else to say about this. If you need stabilization, you generally really need it. It's not something you can just like skimp out on. And there is at least one camera out there with really great stabilization and is roughly the same price and from the same company, and that's the Lumix G85. It did come out after the GH4 and does have a lot of the same benefits and features, but it also comes equipped with Panasonic's dual IS technology. It doesn't have all the pro features, but if you want good stabilization, it's really hard to argue against the G85. Counterpoint. But do you really even need stabilization? Seriously, do your videos have so much motion in it that it requires it to be handheld vloggers? Yes, vloggers, yes, they definitely need stabilization. But if you make videos like I do, uh, that means that 95% of your shots are on a tripod, a dolly, or a slider. Then I would argue you and I don't really need stabilization. If you need a little bit to take out handshake, you can always get a lens with optical image stabilization built into it, but most of us probably don't actually require that level of stability in a camera to get really worked up around the axle. Ha! Like we stated at the beginning of the video, this is not supposed to be negative. I think the GH4 is still an outstanding camera made even more impressive by its old age. But there are some severe limitations that might keep you from wanting to get one of these to create your online content with. Thanks for watching.